Hello everyone, welcome to this video, I'm Dustin. In this video, I will be guiding you through the Plus One Guide Development Environment. First, let's understand how to create a new project and guide. When you open the software, the first thing you'll see is a start page. On the left side of the start page, there is a list of previously opened projects and bookmarked projects, allowing you to directly click to open a previous project. The central area contains links to various tutorials, offering helpful resources for your reference. On the right side, from top to bottom, there are links to the Update Center, the Plus One Forum, the YouTube Video Channel, and Support Pathways through the Help Desk. We can click the New Project button on the Start page to open the New Project window. Additionally, we can use the quick icon in the menu bar or the New Project option in the File drop-down menu to accomplish the same task. In the pop-up New Project window, you can enter the project name, select the project path, and choose the corresponding HWD file and application template. Please note that the HWD file must be installed separately, and you can refer to the previously released video tutorial, 113 Update Center for installation instructions. It's also important to remember that GUI does not currently support non-Latin character paths, so ensure the chosen path contains only Latin letters. Additionally, it's recommended to place only one project in a project folder to maintain a tidy and manageable workspace. Under the Hardware tab, you can find the relevant documentation for the selected hardware. For example, in the datasheet document, you can view the functional descriptions for each pin on the hardware. In the API documentation, you can find detailed information on all programming interfaces. These documents help you understand the characteristics and usage of the selected hardware, enabling more effective project development and programming. Now let's explore the guide development environment. In Guide, you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out on the diagram for better viewing and editing. When you enable the Hand tool, you can drag the diagram by holding the right mouse button. Guide uses a top-down layout. You can enter a page with the shortcut key E and exit with L. Additionally, pressing V opens the cross-reference window, which is very useful for checking references within your program. The image displays some commonly used shortcuts in Guide. These shortcuts can help you use Guide more efficiently for development work, enhancing your productivity and experience. By becoming familiar with these shortcuts, you can more easily navigate pages, adjust layouts, and review code. In the following video, we'll further introduce and explain the specific uses and functions of these shortcuts. The Guide software interface is divided into four sections. The left section contains two tabs, Project Manager and Page Navigator. In the Project Manager tab, you can view all related files within the project, such as LAX files, modules, and more. Through the Project Manager, you can conveniently manage and organize the different units within the project and perform various configurations and operations on them. In the Page Navigator tab, you can see all the pages included in the project. With Page Navigator, you can directly jump to a specific page without needing to navigate through the hierarchy one level at a time. At the bottom of the left section is the Inspector window, which displays the property information for the currently selected content. You can use the Properties window to view and edit the attributes of the project. The lower section contains the Compilation Information window, where you can view detailed compilation information. If compilation fails, this is where you'll find error or warning messages. By examining the compilation information window, you can quickly identify and resolve compilation errors. The right section contains four tabs, Component, Function, Hardware, and My Code. In the Component tab, you can find various basic components for programming, such as Add, Subtract, Multiply, Divide, and Logical Operations, as well as Can Send and Receive Components. These components provide a range of common operations and functionalities, making it easier to incorporate them into your programming tasks. In the Function tab, you can find various generic function blocks that can meet most of your programming needs. These blocks provide convenient functionalities and algorithms to help you develop and complete tasks more efficiently. The Hardware tab contains compliance function blocks for specific hardware products, like pumps, valves, sensors, etc., 
These function blocks are designed specifically for hardware products, providing relevant operation and control features, allowing you to interact with and control hardware devices more easily. On the far right is the My Code tab, which is a repository where you can build your own code library. This tab allows you to save and manage your own written code, so you can reuse and call it when needed. It offers you a convenient way to organize and manage your code resources. You can use the four icons at the bottom right corner to enable or disable the panels that were just introduced. Each panel has a narrow button that you can click to pin the panel or enable the auto-hide feature. This allows you to freely adjust the display and hiding of panels as needed, improving the flexibility and adaptability of the interface. In the center of guide, it is the programming area, which includes four pages and some red buses. There's the inputs page on the left side, which contains most of readable signals from the controller. This includes input signals from each input pin, status feedback signals from each output pin, and some system signals. On the right is the outputs page, which contains all output signals from the controller, including drive signals for LED indicators, drive signals for output pins, and version signals related to the software. In the center is the application page, which usually takes the shape of the selected hardware. This is where users program their code. Users can obtain the required input signals from the inputs page and use the developed program logic to pass the output results to the outputs page, thereby driving the required output pins. In this page, users can write code according to their needs and goals to implement the desired functions and control logic. In Guide, you'll notice thick red lines and thin green lines. The thick red lines represent buses, which are collections of signals and able to contain multiple subbuses and signals. Buses are used to group multiple signals for transmission. The thin green lines represent wires, indicating a single value or signal. Wires are used to represent an individual input, output, or intermediate signal, which can be specifically manipulated and processed during programming. By using a combination of buses and wires, you can connect multiple wires to a bus, achieving signal aggregation. This flexibility allows you to construct complex program architectures and implement intricate functionalities and logic. That's all for this video. Feel free to check out other videos on our channel. For more information on Plus One software, please remember to visit our forum and help desk. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for listening.